has a um, uh, MBA from Harvard. He's a leader in the um, finance sector, specializing in the medical industry. Um, and he completely dedicates this his life to the camera. To, the mic that he has uh, is for the room. To the Jewish people and to championing um, uh, the state of Israel and, uh, uh, and literally uh, fighting evil in this world. He has a, it's an incredible story to share with us. And it gives us great pleasure to have Kenneth Rowlands here. We just flew in uh, on a morning flight to be here with us today. Yeah, so, um, okay. If you could hand these out to people. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to ask you to put this in your pocket so okay. you can move around a little bit. Okay. Try not to go too far, only because of the hand. Yeah. Thank you, Rabbi Tokarski. It's good to see everybody here today. We're going to have some fun today. Uh, uh, I'm handing out a copy of a speech. I'm actually not going to go through these slides. I just want you, we're going to go through the slides in a different format, but I want you to have something to go home with and um, that you'll find interesting, I think. And um, these slides in, um, are on my website. I set up a website as a public service called savethewest.com, uh, which you like. Uh, also, if you turn over to the back of the handout, you'll see a, uh, a little bio of myself, and you'll see a bibliography of about 150 websites, authors, books, key works key, uh, in Western civilization, key leaders, and it was the thinking of these 150 sources which cr uh, I put together and created my um, thinking about how to save Western civilization from itself. Um, the number one enemy of Western civilization is Western civilization. <laughs> and, um, and what I'm giving you there is this, um, uh, some of the key slides uh, from my uh, website. And uh, I'm, I'm actually from the business world. I'm a professional business analyst. I, uh, in healthcare, uh, pharmaceuticals, medical devices, and I think three, five, ten years into the future. And as a uh, concerned citizen, um, I thought that I would um, take some of my analytical skills and apply them to thinking three, five, ten years into the future for America, <coughs> for Western civilization, for Jews, uh, Christians, because we're interrelated with Jews and Christians, and um, and I created this speech. Now, what I'm going to do, though, is I have a, a separate version of the speech, which is more like a seminar, which is what we're going to do today. And I call the seminar Good Versus Evil. And so we're going to have a discussion um, about good versus evil. And uh, so we're going to have some fun. And this will be audience participation. Uh, and um, because you're going to tell me what's good, and you're going to tell me what's evil, and I'll guide you along in case you forget some things. So uh, let me start here. Now, I'm a very um, uh, black and white person, and uh, I don't want to talk about shades of gray uh, today. Today, we're going to oversimplify life and just look at life from the point of view of good versus evil. Now, in reality, there's a lot of things that are sort of good or sort of evil, and there's a lot of gray in the world. But today, we're just going to pretend that all of life is good or evil. So it's a little bit of an intellectual mind game. So what I want you to do, I want to have 10 elements of good and 10 elements of evil 
and we'll compare and contrast them. So I need some help. I want someone to tell me something that's good in the world today. I'm talking about big issues, I'm not talking about pizza. I'm talking about big issues of the world, facing the world. Uh, you can look at in terms of countries, you can look in terms of religions, you can look just in terms of normal behavior of people. But I want you to start telling me I want 10 good things. Uh, globalization, greater interdependence, a smaller likelihood of war. OK. Globalization. On the good side for that. Uh, OK. Now, it doesn't necessarily lead uh, to less war. It could, uh, in the sense that if, we, if the world becomes smaller and we start thinking similarly to each other, we're less likely to fight each other. Um, so it could lead to less war. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see whether it does. OK, over here. Healthcare reform. Healthcare reform. Uh, well, what's wrong with healthcare such that it has oh, to be reformed? To uh, okay, well, I, I can give you more access to healthcare and, and give you worse healthcare at the same time. You, you want more access to worse healthcare? It, it'd be like saying, I, I, I want more access to restaurants. I say, fine, I'll give you all the access you want to McDonald's. And you say, well, I was thinking about French restaurants. Okay, well, you want both. You want more access and you want high quality health care. Because I, I can give you more access and low quality health care. It's called socialism. And all you have to do is go to Canada or Europe and you'll have uh, f uh, free access to health care. And it's, it's not up to high quality and it's delayed. The doctor will say, oh yeah, you need this surgery. It's life-threatening and we'll do it in three months. You say, excuse me, you just told me it was life-threatening and you, now I have to wait three months? Uh, so, but, but you're right, let's just, we'll, we'll put um, healthcare here. <coughs> let's just say better, better health for all of us, yes? Uh, the internet, because it enables people to communicate better and um kind of, there's like no marginal cost associated with anything with the internet? Uh, sure. Well, the uh, internet uh, it really aids globalization. It uh, makes the world smaller, so I'll put it here. Connected. Uh, yes. Education. Education. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> yes, <laughs> if you learn the right things. Uh, I, I, it's, it's back to healthcare. I can have universal access to education and teach you the wrong things, and uh, what does that do for you? But you're right, in general, uh, education's a good idea. Okay, yes? The fact that charities exist? So charities? Help people that are less fortunate. Charity is good, yes. Who else? Yes. Uh, advances in medicine. Medicine. Well, uh, we have health here. Uh, uh, health is, is several issues. Remember, one is access to it, a timely access to health care, and one is uh, high quality care. Uh, another issue is uh, innovation. Um, I, I heard uh, Dick Cheney was on TV. And the reporter said, oh, you, uh, Mr. Vice President, you look so wonderful. He, uh, you, you almost died a few years ago. He said, well, I'm very fortunate because every year or so, I had some uh, uh, new important aspect of cardiovascular disease. And fortunately, the technology was moving ahead so fast that I benefited from all the new technology as I needed it as my health was deteriorating. So uh, these are all aspects of healthcare that, that are important. And uh, so, um, and if we're not healthy, we're not producing a lot in life. Uh, if we're just at home worried about ourselves or in the hospital. Yes? Increased rights for women in most places? Increased rights for women? Okay. Uh, well, um, There's a lot of people want more rights. Uh, women, uh, um, you also have um, uh, other, women aren't minorities, but you have other, other minorities who want more rights. In the history of Western civilizations, everyone got more rights. If 
you go back years, years ago, hundreds or thousands of years ago, uh, the king had rights. And everybody else was a subject uh, uh, of, of the king. Uh, so over uh, 2,000 years, of, uh, well, 4,000 years of Western civilization, uh, everyone's gotten more rights. But it's not like uh, we're perfect yet. So we'll just say uh, uh, rights and more rights. Yes? Space exploration. Space exploration. Um, well, yes. The, um, now, uh, spa uh, the whole uh, effort to put uh, astronauts in the air, to go to the moon, uh, in, into space rather, uh, in the moon, a huge amount of technology was created uh, to do this. Some of it leads to military technology, which can be good or bad. Uh, but in general, uh, what our scientists know now versus uh, my younger days when, when the Russians put up the first Sputnik, which was a shock to America that the Russians beat us, uh, so to speak, it led to the politicians saying, we're not going to allow the Russians to beat us, and we're going to go to the moon. When uh, President Kennedy announced uh, 10 years before we got to the moon that we're going to the moon, that uh, energized uh, the space program and energized the country. And uh, so good, good things for space. I need some more good news. OK, so I'll just say food to abbreviate. If food is good, if you're hungry, uh, you're not, like if you're sick, you're not accomplishing a lot in life if you're uh, starving, so, so food's good, yes? Energy advancements? Energy? Uh, yes, we all need more energy. And the U.S. Has, uh, is on its way to becoming energy independent. It's not like we ha had a strategy. It would have been nice to have a strategy, but we, we did it just because we did it, because the marketplace uh, um, and technology uh, developed hydraulic fracking, which allowed um, a lot of natural gas uh, to come out of the ground where it would have been stuck there otherwise. And as a result, the price of oil, which is inter interrelated with the price of natural gas, uh, went from roughly 100 to roughly 50 uh, in the last uh, year or two uh, as a result. So it's, uh, that's uh, helped um, help the economy tremendously. Okay, some more good things. Security. Security, yes. If we're not secure, we're, we're in trouble. So security, I'm running out of room, but uh, we'll put security. Security uh, is very important, and there's many elements to security. Uh, there's the, the armed forces, of course, there, but there's also the police. Uh, there's the um, CIA, the FBI, uh, the Coast Guard. There's many elements of national security, uh, local security, and they're all important. And um, in general, um, democracies underspend in security issues uh, because um, it, it takes money from social programs. The, the way politicians get elected is they say, vote for me, I'm going to give you something, like some benefit, some subsidy. Uh, and if you have to devote a lot to uh, national security, uh, you can't offer a lot of free benefits or subsidized benefits. So there's always tension in democracies. And as a result, democracies in general do not spend enough on national security, which then leads to Pearl Harbor 9-11. And then they, they spend money. It's, uh, uh, it's one of the defects of democracy. OK, some more good news. Uh, traumatic experience. Well, so, some of that's in the healthcare system. Uh, some of it's some of it's in um, charity. Um, but but you're you're right. Um, uh, uh, roughly five percent of the people generate fifty percent of the costs in the healthcare system. So, um, uh, in other words, ninety-five percent uh, of us are only five percent of the cost. Yes. So the the five percent who are in big trouble, we have to provide huge amount of help to them. Because um, statistically, we could be one of the five uh, someday, too. Yes? Just, techno just te technology in general, it's just increasing at such a rapid pace that every aspect of our lives is going to eventually get improved by it if it hasn't already. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, 
I mean, look, look at look at Apple. I mean, what? Uh, by the way, uh, not only look at Apple in terms of um, desktop computers, and then at its movement into uh, iPad. Uh, well, it was um, uh, iPads, iPhones, uh, uh, and now I the watches. It's it's incredible. And and by the way, how many other countries could produce an Apple? In other words, was, was an Apple produced in England? Was it produced in Russia? Did China produce an Apple? No, America produced an Apple. And, and it's a tribute to our society that we um, educate people enough to think enough to create an Apple and then have a system which brings the financing to a company like Apple so an Apple can become an, uh, uh, as big and strong as it is. So uh, uh, technology, um, I'll put, well, it's a little bit in related with education. Uh, you have enough smart people and they, they'll figure things out, so I'll put it here because I'm also running out of room. Okay, so let's see how many we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I need one more. Yes? Access to financial markets. Financial markets. Uh, it's a little bit interrelated here. You need smart people, you also need money. It's like fertilizer, so I'll, I'll put um, um, uh, finance. Okay, yes? Uh, what about freedom, or would that kind of go with rights? Freedom? Freedom like is what's behind all that. No, freedom's very important. If you don't have a free society and your, your brain's not allowed to go wherever your brain takes you, you're not creating the next apple. So um, we'll say free, freedom. Yes? So, uh, just sort of uh, economic stability. That, that allows us to work. Sure. Well, well I'll, I'll put it here. Um, stability. We take it for granted. But what if we were living in Iraq or Syria today? Uh, is the next apple going to be coming out of Iraq and Syria when we don't know if we're going to even get to our jobs or get back home? Yes? Um, uh, communication that the, the news gets to us faster than it used to previously. So we get news from overseas in a minute. Yeah, okay, great. Okay, any last couple comments? Uh, maybe community, all the technology we have is also uh, reaffirming our, our knowledge that community is so important. You know, all the distance from social media like, made us realize that uh, how important community was and not to, you know, just even though spreading out and being aware on social media, keeping in touch with everyone is great. Keeping in touch with people around you is important also. Uh, okay, so community. Uh, let's see, where can I put it? Yeah, I'll, I'll put it here, community. Okay, any last one? Sports. 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 Well, it's interrelated with health. We, we, we should all be exercising one or two or three times a week, uh, more if we can. So I'll put, um, I'll put exercise. Yes? Celebrations, um, you know, time to get together, etc. Celebrations. Yes. That's a good well, they can be secular celebrations like Thanksgiving. Right. They, it can be uh, Jewish um, uh, holidays, uh, um, Pesach. There can be Christian holidays, Christmas. Holidays are good <laughs> because we, we work, work, work. It's nice to have a period of time, uh, uh, Shabbat. It's nice to have a period of time where we stop working. Uh, and so I think that's good. I, I put it in related with, a uh, little bit in related with health. So why don't we say uh, holidays, but it's bigger than holidays. It, it really relates to culture. We, we have a secular culture, we're proud Americans. We have a religious culture, we're proud Jews. But the Christians are proud too. And, and, and so it's good that all of us have um, holidays which are, are, are just symbols of a, of, a, of a vibrant culture. So I'll put holidays um, slash culture. Okay, yes? In the history of mankind, the poverty rate has never been so low. 
Okay. okay. Sure. Uh, that's right. Poverty is bad. Uh, so where do we have? Um, yeah, I, I think uh, we, we had. Um, Put a higher standard. Of well, education, technology, finance, stability, um, and uh, what was your issue again? What I just said. Yeah. Uh, in the history of mankind, the poverty rate has never been. Oh, okay. Low. Right. Well, you do all these wonderful things, you'll get less poverty. So I'll put poverty. We'll get less of it. it if you have your act together as a country, um, you'll, you'll have less poverty. In fact, one of the great, uh, no civilization has produced more economic good things than Western civilization. 4,000 years of Western civilization, we have a lot to be proud about. In fact, I should add, um, Western civilization. Western civilization allowed all these wonderful things to happen. We take it for granted because we, we just assume these things, but there's nothing to assume. We have to constantly remind ourselves how lucky we are to be part of Western civilization. And now, uh, uh, I think uh, all of you were from Russia, or most of you were from Russia. Russia had one foot in Western civilization and one foot out of Western civilization. It would have been better off if both feet had been in uh, Western civilization. Anyone, any last comments? Taking care of the environment. Environment, okay. Um, let's see, uh, where should we put environment? Uh, well, I think I'll, I'll put it here with, with health. Uh, any of you been to China or India and, and, and had a great a breath of fresh air? There's so much air. I was in China about 20 years ago. Um, uh, I was in uh, India maybe 15 years ago. You, hard, you can't even breathe. It's like, uh, like uh, breathing from an exhaust pipe of a car. So uh, I'll, I'll put uh, environment. Okay, any last one? Uh, religion. religion. Oh, good. Fi finally, I was waiting. I was waiting for someone to say that. That's good. Yeah, just in the nick of time. Uh, uh, religion is, is, I regard as a good. It can be a bad if you carry it to an extreme. So, for example, uh, if, if someone said, uh, I'm, I'm a good Jew, I'd say, oh, oh, fine, or, or a good Christian, that's fine. And if someone says, and I'm really religious, I know so much, I know everything about the Torah and the holidays, everything, I go, great. And if then someone said, and I'm such a great Jew or Christian, that if I see someone who's not as good as I am, I'm going to kill them. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, now you've taken a good of religion, you made it into an evil. Okay, so we're going to get to that in about two minutes. So uh, for religion, religion's uh, very important, and it's very important for our culture. So I have Western, uh, I ran out of room because I want to save room for evil. So it's Western civilization, Western culture, Western religion, and that's Judeo-Christian religion. And uh, Judaism is the base, Christianity came later. It's uh, the next floor. I, I happened to be uh, talking with some evangelical Christians. I gave a speech and, and afterwards uh, I was chatting with them and they say, we want the Jews to stay strong. And he, and he said to me, think of Judaism, uh, think of religion as like a house. And the Christians live on the second floor and the Jews are the foundation on the first floor. He said, if something happens to the Jews, what's going to happen to us on the second floor? So the, the future of Judaism of Jews and Christians is interrelated. And I have an expression that Jews and Christians will thrive together or die together, pick one. And so uh, Judeo-Christian um, history, philosophy, tradition helped get us to where we are. The values of the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament got us where we are. So I'll put that part of Western civilization um, and, uh, and uh, religion. Okay, so, uh, and by the way, there's great works, um, documents of Western civilization, the Bible, 
the Old Testament, New Testament, uh, uh, the Magna Carta. No one remembers the Magna Carta in the, in the mid 1200s, uh, which uh, where basically in England, the people rose up and said, the king works for us. We don't work for the king. Uh, that was pretty revolutionary uh, at, at that time. Uh, and uh, which then caused the notion that government serve the people, we don't serve the government. So I would say a hallmark of good in the hallmark of success of Western civilization is the primary role of the individual. If you looked at, we'll get to this in evil, but if you look at the um, goodness comes from individuals doing the good things that they do, with guidance, with laws, of course, like in a football game, there's boundaries, there's, uh, something's out of bounds. But uh, when you get to evil, usually the government or the king uh, or the dictator uh, is running everything, and you don't have the primary role of the individual. So uh, I'll add here, uh, uh, rights, freedom, let's just say the primary role of the individual. Um, created all these things, of course, within a wonderful environment um, that allowed individuals to be successful. So uh, let me... Um, let me just, so let me know, I'm going to organize these uh, wonderful comments into three categories. The way I look at life is, again, simple way to look at life, is there's economic good, there's cultural good, and there's physical good. And any successful society must do all three. And all three are equally important, and you can't be wrong on any one of them. So let me just, for, for economic good, we'll call that number one. Uh, globalization is, that's one. Uh, environment, health, uh, exercise. Um, well, culture, uh, this is one and two. By, by that I mean uh, one is, is economic good, uh, two is cultural good. Education, technology, financial stability, um, we'll call that primarily economic good. Charity, uh, call that social good, number two. Rights, freedom, the, it's part of our culture, number two. Space is, um, it's, it's number one and three, it's economic good. It also can be military good. Food, we'll call economic good. Energy, economic good. Security, we'll call number three. <laughs> and you do all of these, um, roughly 10 wonderful things, you'll get a successful society. And that's what we have. Now we have to make sure we keep it. Because the forces of evil want to take it away from us. So now let's go to evil. I want you to tell me 10 things that are evil. Uh, globalization? Evil? Globalization, yeah. I... You think it's evil? Yeah. Well, uh, by the way, uh, many things that are good can become evil if you uh, don't control them. Uh, but uh, tell me, in what way can globalization be evil? Well, uh, I think um, uh, it results in a concentration of wealth in a handful of places, and then that uh, ends up destabilizing the entire, economic, uh, the entire system, basically. Okay, so why don't we say... Um, Too much power ends up in one place. Yeah, why don't we say, uh, this is really a, a distortion. Uh, 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 something that's good uh, can become distorted. Uh, for example, if, uh, if you looked at life as an economic race, and we all ran, so to speak, to make money, and one of us makes $50 billion and the rest of us starve, that's, that, that's not a good race. Uh, there's some, something wrong there. Is that the point you're getting to? So maybe the issue is more uh, income uh, inequality. Uh, okay, I, I suppose I'm not the top of my question. Yeah, okay. So uh, we'll say, um, well, I'm running out of room here. Just one second. I'll, I'll, I'm going to put religion here. So that I can uh, save some room here. Okay. So, we have in income. Uh, 
Now, by the way, on this issue, there's uh, two competing uh, concepts. One is uh, equality of, of um, opportunity, and one is equality of outcomes. Some people, in general, Republicans, would say we should have an equal opportunity to succeed. The Democrats uh, would say we want uh, equal opportunity uh, of uh, outcome. So there, we, we have an intellectual debate uh, going on within the, the country uh, about that issue. And um, so, I mean, uh, just for argument's sake, if uh, let's pretend we, we graduate, we all have jobs, and, uh, and we're making some money, and half of us, th this half of the people make $100,000 a year salary, and this half don't have a job. Uh, but but we, we all had the opportunity to go to college, we all had the opportunity to go to graduate school. We, 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 we all had equal opportunities, but the fact of the matter is half of us here make $100,000 a year and half are unemployed. Uh, how would you like it if I said, we're going to take half of the income of the 100,000 people and give it to these people so that these $100,000 a year people make 50 and these $0 a year people will make 50. Does anybody like that system? <laughs> well, you could see you're going to have a, a big problem if you try to do that uh, because the, the hundred will be livid at you and, and, the, and, the, and the zeros that go to 50, I suppose, will be grateful, but you'll have huge tension in the society if you do something like that. By, by the way, every society does it to an extent. In other words, uh, the, the people making 100 are going to pay 30% taxes, so they're actually going to make 70. And, and the people who are making zero will get food stamps and Medicaid, and they'll, in effect, make 30. So we actually already do it. We, we don't know that we do it. Uh, uh, but if, if you do it to too large an extent, then you'll get a revolt of the people making 100. Yes? There was actually an article, I forgot what company did this, about uh, some guy, he lowered his own CEO of the company, lowered his own pay so everybody in the company can start over $70,000. With how much money? 70000 to start. Oh. Yeah. That's a nice minimum wage. Uh, yes, okay, but, but that was done voluntarily. Uh, that's, that's wonderful. Uh, when a government comes in and imposes it, like the former Soviet Union, uh, you can basically destroy the work ethic of uh, people. Yes? War, not War, okay. Well, war is one of those things that's, it sounds bad, but it actually can be good, it can be bad. I mean, take World War II. Uh, it was terrible that we had to fight World War II. Uh, but it would have been more terrible if we had lost World War II. We'd be speaking German or Japanese if, if we were still living. We'd, we'd be dead or speaking German and Japanese. So uh, I would say war is good when the good guys win, and war is bad when the bad guys win. But, but fine, we'll call it evil. Yes, yes? Religious fundamentalism. Uh, okay, well, remember we were talking about religion is good. But you take it to that extreme that I mentioned, you don't uh, believe in what I believe, I'm going to kill you? Okay, yes. So let's put it... Um, oh, slash terrorism. Yes. Religion can become dysfunctional. Religion, um, we'll say religion terror. It's, it's one thing for someone to say, I believe in something. It's another thing for saying, and you have to believe in it too, or you're in big trouble. We've, we've spent... Uh, basically 4,000 years of Western civilization has been fighting over this concept. And finally, uh, and by the way, a lot of uh, Catholics killed a lot of Protestants, a lot of Protestants killed a lot of Catholics. And, uh, but finally, after 4,000 years of fighting, Western civilizations come to the realization that since we're 90% the same, we, we don't have to kill each other for the other 10. In other words, 90% of us think alike, uh, whether we're in America, we're in uh, Europe, Israel, uh, India, um, uh, Japan, uh, Australia, in the Western world, uh, half of Africa, we think alike and we basically agree to disagree. So we say, fine. Uh, the, the Protestants said to the Catholics and vice versa, I don't think, I'm a Catholic, I don't want to be a Protestant, but you're a Protestant, God bless you, be a Protestant. And uh, I'm not going to impose Catholicism on you, and you're not going to impose it on us. It took 2,000 years of fighting for that to happen. 
And then, of course, Christians and Jews have been fighting. But anyway, it's 4,000 years of fighting. And it shouldn't have taken that long. And we finally realized that none of us have to impose their views on somebody else. We, we just have to learn how to live together because we're 90% the same and not go crazy over the 10% differences that we all have. OK, who else? Some more evil. I need more evil. Destruction of natural resources. OK, well, we're talking about the, uh, protecting the environment. Evil would be destroy, destroying the environment. So I'll put that. Yes. Uh, nuclear weapons. OK, nuclear weapons is a little bit like war. It can be good and can be bad. So I'll put. So I'll, I'll give you an example of nuclear weapons uh, that are good. Take World War II. We were fighting against the Japanese. We were going to fight till the finish. Um, uh, we were able, because of the brains of the people at that time, to develop uh, um, three nuclear bombs, <coughs> or atomic bombs, they were called at that time. So we, we dropped them on Japan, and roughly 250,000 people died twice. So you could say, that's terrible. We killed 500,000 people. Now look at the alternative. The alternative is we would have had to invade Japan. <laughs> uh, all our brave soldiers would have got shot up. The Japanese would have gotten shot up. The, we would have blown up Japan uh, with conventional weapons. Uh, I'll just guess 5 million people would have died. So in that example, I would say nuclear weapons were good. Because although it's terrible to kill 500,000 people, it's better than killing five million people. So, I, uh, so nuclear weapons in the, in the right hands are, are good. Nuclear hand, uh, weapons in the hands of bad guys are bad. And uh, <coughs> we'll talk about more uh, soon on that. Uh, whatever governments that is in power purposefully, um, purposefully using the education system, uh, using the education system, the public school system, and teaching, teaching all the kids the wrong things, and, Sure. And teaching them like dogma to believe that other countries are evil. And I don't know the words for that. Well, well, you started off right and you yes. deteriorated. Kind of like the Soviet Union. Kind of like the Soviet Union uh, brainwashed children. North Korea, North Korea currently brainwashes its whole society and every single child that goes into the public school system to believe that the whole world is evil and that their country themselves is good, but in reality they're actually most evil. Yeah, it's, it was, that's right. And all just to keep all just to keep them themselves in power. The, the power is in power. Well, you've gotten to another issue is out of control government. So I'll put government like this. You have an out of control government. Re remember, the primary role of Western civilization has been to glorify and, and, and help the individual succeed. You take it uh, to the opposite extreme. You have the government or the dictator in control of things. St bad things happen. So you're right. Who else? Yes. Uh, too many choices. Like, uh, choices. Like, when you go to a restaurant, is there too many you complain? They say, gee, is this too much choice here? It's like you could have, every, you could have like anything, but you can't have everything, I guess. Because like, like, we yeah. have everything. Yeah. Yeah. By, so by the way, hard. every day we walk into a store or into the internet, and there's this many things we want to buy, and we have this much money. Uh, so we, we have to allocate our, our, our money wisely. Um, but you're right, there's a massive amount of, of things you can do with the dollar, and unfortunately, we, we only have this many dollars. So, um, so let, let's just say, um, I'll put uh, choices to, it, 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 we can get confused uh, with, with too, too many choices. Yes, you're right. Um, global warming is environmental detriment. Global warming. Um, we just went through winter. We, 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 you, you, no, as a would, would you rather that uh, you were colder? So the lie that the lie that global warming exists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, global warming is. Uh, it, it can be good or bad. Depends how you look at it. Um, if global warming is just caused by nature, well, that's the way it is. It, it, if human beings are causing global warming, that's probably not good. Um, <laughs> But we, we have no clue what to do about it. Uh, most of the global warming or carbon in the air comes from the developing, from the, the young, 
uh, China, Russia, China, uh, India, the, the developing world. It doesn't come from the Western world. So the Western world can cut all the carbons at once. It has no impact on the weather. Um, but if you, if you cut carbon consumption in the developing countries, they're not going to develop. So it's a can of worms issue, but I'll, I'll put it here. Warming. Let's say out of control warming is not good. Yes? Racism? Racism, okay. Okay, yes? Conformity? Conformity? Like materialism? Materialism? You don't want more money? You want course, less money? Of course, but after a while it becomes self defeating. They say like the P, after like se after you make like seventy uh, seventy thousand dollars a year, it, like uh, your happiness goes down. Like it, it like it peaks there and oh. then like it plateaus. So if you were making seventy thousand and I, I I promised to double your salary, you would say, uh, yeah, I'm going to be unhappy if you take me to one hundred and forty. Average person. Oh. Oh, but you're not average. You'll, you're happy to, you know, you'll take the 140. You're just saying for the other people. Everyone else. <laughs> so, well, it goes back to this issue of uh, income inequality. It's, uh, uh, it, it, you take it to, uh, on steroids to an extreme, you're right. It's, it's not good. Yes? Obamacare? Obamacare. Well, there's two issues. Uh, I, uh, Obama and there's Obamacare. Which one do you want to discuss? <laughs> okay. They're two separate issues, two separate issues. Um, by the way, this, uh, just going back to choices, uh, remember we're discussing good and evil. Choices or excess choices or dilemmas, I call it, it's, it's bad or it's unfortunate or, or it's not evil, so to speak. And so today's discussion is about evil because I'm over, I want to oversimplify life so, so that if we were discussing things that are bad, we'll be here for all day and all night. So, so I'll, take, I'll take, not that it's a bad comment, it's a good comment, but it's uh, not evil. Uh, so uh, I'm going to need some room because trust me, there's a lot more evil that we're going to discuss. So, uh, so let, let's look at Obamacare. We'll, we'll go to Obama uh, separately, but let's look at Obamacare. What's wrong with Obamacare? It's socialism. Uh, and what's wrong with socialism? What's wrong with socialism is that we each have individual problems and challenges that we confront in life. Uh, health insurance is one of them. And um, the, the question is who has the primary role for providing you health insurance? You, the individual? because you work and you pay for it? Or are we the government who takes that responsibility from you? Well, every Western democracy is really half capitalism and half socialism. And so therefore, uh, we've decided, we, uh, every Western society has decided to subsidize people's health insurance so that although the individual has the primary role, uh, uh, we want to make sure that everybody can, can afford it. It's like education in the public school system. We, uh, for the last hundred years or so, uh, bless you, for the last hundred years, we've subsidized everybody's education because we realized a hundred years ago it's dysfunctional if 70% uh, of the people go to school and 30 don't, and the 30 who are illiterate have no future in life and become criminals and steal from the other 70, it's better just to give everybody schooling, make sure everybody has schooling. By the way, we don't feel that way to religious schools in America. As you know, we have separation of church and state. So if you want to go to a religious school, whether it's Catholic school, Jewish school, or whatever, there the government says it's not my responsibility to send you to a Jewish school. Uh, it's my responsibility to send you a school, a public school. If you want to go to a Jewish school, you spend money, you spend your afternoons or whatever, weekends, and, and go to a Jewish school, but it's not a government responsibility. But, uh, so what's wrong with Obamacare is whenever you have socialism, uh, socialism is, is a pr uh, promise that society gives to people. And what happens is it's, it, it's just a question of how many years it takes before you can't fulfill the promise. So for example, if I said, uh, I'm really wealthy, and, and I hear that you're, you're all starving and it's terrible, and I think you should have free lunch forever. Uh, uh, everyone's going to applaud and say, what a nice guy this person is. But did I define what lunch is? I didn't define it. I just said you should have a free lunch. Well, what's going what's to happen to your eating behavior 
over the next few months. Okay. And no, right now, whenever any of you have lunch, what do you pay for lunch? I'll guess, ten dollars. Pick a number, fifteen dollars. Okay. What do you What do you think you'll be paying for lunch in a year after I tell you that I'm going to pay for lunch? Is it, is it, it, well, is anyone going to go have a ten dollar meal? If, I, if I'm paying, if you're going to send the bill to me, is anyone going to eat lunch for ten dollars? No. You'll have hundred dollar lunches. Uh, if you were smart, you'd have $1,000 lunches because I just promised to pay for everybody's lunches. So you see, it's just a question of time till I run out of money. And when I run out of money, uh, um, uh, I'm going to have to restrict your, uh, which, which restaurants you can go to and how much you can eat. And then you're going to be angry at me because I promised you a free lunch. Now all of a sudden, I say, but yeah, but uh, after $10, I'm not paying for it. So socialism takes responsibility away from the individual. That's the problem with socialism. On the other hand, we want everybody to have health insurance. We want everybody to have education. So it's one of those dilemmas. And if you carry it too far, you end up with a dead healthcare system uh, or a healthcare system that can't uh, provide the needs. And, and the big issue in healthcare comes about, remember I said 5% of the people are 50% of the cost? Well, about 1% of the people are 25% of the cost. Under any socialist government, you will end up killing the 1%. Now, they, they don't line them up against the wall and say, you have uh, this cancer, you have Alzheimer's, or you have diabetes, and we're going to shoot you. But what they do is they just don't provide you the most uh, up-to-date pharmaceuticals, the, and the most intensive hospital therapy, and all socialist governments kill the 1%. It's, uh, now, the other 99% say, well, what, what do I care? I, I, I don't have that disease. But statistically, some of the 99 is going to become some of the 1. So, uh, um, but let me just conclude with Obamacare. There's two ways to subsidize people. Uh, there's two ways to subsidize people. In general, Democrats believe in what I have, uh, DB, which means defined benefit. That's what I said to you, I'm providing lunch. That's a defined benefit. Whatever lunch is, you can have it, send me the bill. In theory, a Republican would say, I believe in a defined contribution, which I have DC. What that means is, you're starving, it's terrible, um, tragic, and I'm gonna each, give each of you a $10 voucher to eat at the restaurant of your choice, whatever you want, here's $10 voucher. Uh, in both cases, uh, there's a subsidy here. It's just one subsidy is based on a defined contribution, one is based on a defined benefit. In general, uh, I summarize it by saying, there's two ways to treat citizens in the country. You can treat them as adults or you can treat them as children. Democrats, in general, treat people as children. Republicans, in general, treat people as adults. Now, that's an oversimplification, but I'm just saying, in general, that's uh, the difference between the two parties. Okay, I need some more evil. Oh, we, we didn't discuss Obama. Who, who thinks that Obama should be uh, here or here? And if, let's take a vote. Evil. Evil? Ra evil, to raise your hands. Okay, uh, good, raise your hands. Okay, well, not everyone raised their hands. So, uh, okay, so uh, I'll put... Put most of the letters on that side. I don't think people heard the question. The question is, that we're talking about good and evil. We're not talking about uh, good or bad. Uh, we're talking about good or evil. So, uh, President Obama, does he belong in the good or in the evil? Evil. And so I want to take a, let's take the vote again. Who thinks, raise your hand, if you think he should be in the evil category? Okay, and raise your hand if you think he should be in the good category. Okay, and raise your hand if you think you're confused. Uh, okay, fine. Um, there, there's elements of both, um, uh, but personally, uh, I would put him here. The, uh, now, the, let's go back to the three big issues of the day. This, the, by the way, every time a politician speaks, I pretend I'm a professor, I give them a grade. And you should do the same. You should grade them on their ability to grow an economy, 
on the ability to protect our culture and on their ability to protect us physically. So, um, so can President Obama grow an economy? Not that the president grows the economy, we the people grow the economy, but the government sets up the rules, so to speak, or the boundaries. The economy is growing around 2%, it should be growing 4 We've had the weakest recovery since the recession in the history of modern uh, American economics. So I think in terms of growing the economy, he, he, gets, he gets a failing grade. Too much regulation, uh, too, much too much government. Uh, on the issue of culture, does he believe in Judeo-Christian culture? Uh, 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 by the way, the number one persecuted minority in the world today is Christians. Christians, there's a massacre, there's a holocaust of Christians going on in about 20 different countries around the world. They're getting killed in Syria, in Iraq, in Nigeria. Uh, 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 almost a year ago, 250 girls were kidnapped in Nigeria. Did he do anything? Did he provide some military aid, some uh, UAVs, some drones to find the girls? Nothing. Uh, and uh, so I would say he fails in terms of protecting our culture. And number three, protecting us physically, he's negotiating a deal with Iran. Iran's a professional terror organization. It, it pretends that it's a government, but it's actually a terror organization that took over a government. Should America be negotiating with terrorists? I don't think so. So he gets an F three times, and that's why uh, I, I, I would put him on that side. Okay, let's, some more evil, I need more evil. Michelle. <laughs> what? Uh, the beauty industry uh, hiring models who then make them. And in order for the models to be digested, she has to, uh, she has to live up to the to live up to the standard of beauty, which just fulfills itself. Because it, who knows when it started, the chicken or the egg? You don't know whether humans started thinking that you have to be really skinny and have blonde hair and have like slim cheekbones and not eat to achieve that. And then they make, put them on dietary supplements, put makeup on them, they put them, they Photoshop them, and then they advertise this on TV to little children watching Disney channels, especially girls, and, they make, and when girls realize they don't look like that, it hurts their self-esteem. Self 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 and then when you have a person with low self-esteem, all of those things in the evil section, uh, okay. the domino effect that just makes them more prominent. So skinny blondes, shallow yeah. blondes. So, so just as a test case, if there's a supermodel, uh, roughly your age, who's 10 pounds underweight and she wants to marry you, you'll say no? Is that what you're saying? First, I will try to help her deal with her insecurity. Oh, so you'll tell her as soon as you... Yeah. So, you, so as soon as she gains 10 pounds, then you'll marry her. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> okay, what, what, what do we say? Uh, dysfunctional so, uh, social pressure. Okay, and um, so I'll just put uh, social. I think like shallowness too. Yeah. yeah. Like a shallow society. That's right. It's it, it's it's also reflects a lack of culture. When when you're not focused on the key cultural issues, you end up focused on silly um, uh, outside issues rather than the key inside issues. Uh, you're right. Okay, evil. GMOs, um, uh, but uh, what, what if you're a farmer and, and, and you can produce 20% more corn or whatever and uh, would, you, would you call that even? And, and if you're the consumer and pay 20% less because there's more corn and the price of corn goes down, is that evil? Well, the point, it's a rhetorical question. Yes, it can, it can be evil if you don't manage it properly. Uh, if some of those um, change genes uh, fundamentally change the food system. So I would call that it good or evil. It's, it's like religion. It, it, it can be good, it can be evil. So I'll put it here in the middle. That it can go uh, either way. Yes? Diseases and epidemics. Diseases, yeah. So we're talking about health. So um, uh, it's, um, uh, I'll, I'll put it with here with Obamacare. Um, By the way, when, um, one of the key tests of a healthcare system is when the leader, the key leader gets ill and needs surgery, does he have that surgery in his country or does he go somewhere else? 
So that, that's a litmus test. So uh, Chavez, um, dictator of uh, Venezuela, was sick. He went to Cuba. The, hello, you're, you're, the, you're the president of Venezuela, and, and your healthcare system isn't good enough that you don't trust it for yourself? That's, that's an indictment of a country uh, when a uh, prime minister gets care uh, outside. Um, when, uh, who in Russia needed a, a bypass? Was it Yeltsin? Yeltsin needed a bypass, and um, uh, he was probably tempted to go outside, uh, but they brought American physicians uh, over to, to Russia. Uh, but I remember from the newspaper, the Russians did the surgery, and, uh, but the Americans were there watching. Uh, it's a good compromise. I, I wouldn't criticize Yeltsin for, for making that decision. Uh, I certainly would criticize him if he went to Germany. Uh, for care at that time. The Saudi Arabian princes and things like that? Yeah, they, they, the Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Yeah, they'll come to the Cleveland Clinic. I hear they love the Cleveland Clinic and, and get the, the best American care. Uh, meanwhile, they, have, uh, they control 80% of the mosques in the US in training their children to hate us, hate Jews and Christians. Uh, yet, when they get sick, it's fine for the Jews and Christians to take care of them. So that, that's a good example of hypocrisy. Yes? Yeah. Well, po po too many people? Well, it depends which, which people. It, 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 it depends too many of who. Um, and uh, the... Um, sure. Well, uh, this is a can of worms issue. Uh, but for example, in China, they, they said that um, we, we only want boys. So they kill girls. That's not, not great. And, um, and then in, um, you also have differential growth rates. In Europe, the, uh, you, you need 2.1 babies to replace the population. Uh, in Europe, they uh, recollect the number like 1.35. So Europe, when, you, when, when two parents produce, assuming you could produce 1.35 babies, uh, you'll have a decline in the population because you're not, re you're not replacing yourselves. The two, the two parents are not replacing themselves. <clears throat> so in Europe, the population growth is minus one or minus two. And then if you have a Muslim population, for example, that's not integrated, like it is in America, but not integrated in Europe, then you can have a situation where uh, the Muslim population is growing three and the European uh, indigenous European populations growing minus one or minus two, you can see you're going to have a problem. Over time, you'll become a Muslim country. So uh, let's say po population management, it, it's good or bad. It's, uh, uh, religious Jews uh, have uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten kids. I think that, that's wonderful. Uh, you have to pay for them. It's, it's not easy. But so population, it's one of those things that can be good or evil. It's not, uh, but for to now, we'll just put it here. Yes? Uh, deception sometimes? Deception? Yeah. Deception. Yeah, I think deception is always bad. Yeah, um, I, I think people should tell the truth. Yeah, yeah. yeah if they don't tell the truth, um, that, that's not good. And it's a hallmark of Western civilization. Yeah. Well, sometimes people with a certain economic or political point of view Use misinformation to sway people's opinions, and I, I think that kind of deception is always bad. Yes, I, I think uh, one of the way, one of the reasons why Western civilization is so successful is because, in general, we tell the truth. We believe in telling the truth. So, uh, if you don't tell the truth, uh, that's a problem. So, I'll say deception. Okay, fine. In about area fifty-one. <laughs> about that. What's the area fifty-one? Place where they uh, secret government, secret government research on aliens. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, so you don't like aliens? No, I do. <laughs> we we don't have any aliens, but if we had them. But we have uh, Area 51. Oh. Do you know? Are you familiar? No, I'm not. No, that's, yeah, afterwards explain it to me. Okay. Yeah. How about just general appeasement? It's, so when, when it's, instead of fighting against these evils, we sort of allow them to, we make excuses for their existence. Yeah, sure, appeasement. Yeah, look, look at uh, World War II. In World War II, 
uh, Hitler was a menace. We, at that time, the governments did nothing in the uh, mid-30s and the late 30s. It precipitated World War II. 60 million people died due to appeasement. And Neville Chamberlain would be the poster child of appeasement. We, uh, the Brits and the French could have gone into Germany, stopped Hitler uh, in the uh, mid or late 30s. Uh, let's just, I'll guess, 1,000 people would have been killed. They didn't. And we ended up having 60 million dead people for no reason. So appeasement is, is bad. When, when you're confronting evil, it, uh, it's better to confront it than to appease it. Take Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan made the decision that the Soviet Union was an evil empire. We didn't have presidents before that who said that. They might have thought that. But Reagan said it's an evil empire and um, uh, uh, we're dedicated to the destruction of this evil empire. We ended up destroying it, but not with weapons. Uh, we destroyed it. They, they just lost. Uh, the Soviet Union, communism was a false narrative. They just stopped believing in their false narrative. It took 70 years, okay? But here we confronted the evil and we ended up having peace and without a million people dead by staying strong and not appeasing the evil. Yes? Autocracy and corruption in government are also? Well, when governments get too big, it leads to corruption because if you had one leader or a few leaders making all the decisions of uh, uh, you give money to the, uh, to the leader, the leader gives you some benefit and you're, you're happy. So big governments lead to Corruption. And the, and the autocracy and also dictatorships. Right. Um, yes. Who else? Evil. Any more evil? Yes. Uh, we're very spoiled. Who? We're very spoiled. Who are we it's spoiled? All stuff for granted. In Western civilization in general, we take everything for granted. Because we just assume, because we have such a nice, wonderfully functioning society, with the rule of law, we know what the rules are, we stay within the rules. Uh, uh, this is a very, um, we take it for granted because uh, we, uh, during our 4,000 years of the rise of Western civilization, we've accomplished so much. We killed a lot of people along the way, by the way. But anyway, uh, we've accomplished so much that we take it for granted. A lot of people died to get to where we are today. Uh, uh, whether they died in, in, in uh, uh, fighting the British in the 1700s, whether they died in the 1800s to keep our country unified, to destroy slavery. Um, a, a, a lot of, uh, World War II, World War I, World War II, a lot of people had to die to get us to where we are today, and we take it for granted. We shouldn't take it for granted. We should be very grateful for where we are today. Yes, evil. Greed. Well, greed can be good and evil. It's, it's, uh, we're all a little greedy, and we should be. However much money we make, we want to make more. There's nothing, uh, nothing wrong with that. Uh, when, when we buy something, we wish we could buy more. So, so greed uh, can be good if it's, uh, call it, um, uh, moderate greed, <laughs> or let's say, but you put greed on steroids, and you go rob a bank. Uh, and and, and, and uh, so, so, but I'll, I'll put it here, uh, uh, greed uh, can become uh, evil. Okay, any more evil? I need some more evil. Oh, okay, so I'll, I'll add some evil. Uh, uh, let's, um, well, Let's go through the three categories. Economic evil. Economic evil, poverty. That's economic evil, right? Um, where do we have um, greed? Um, do we have poverty here? Income inequality. Uh, okay, here, so I'll, I'll add poverty here. So again, I'll categorize this as one. Uh, economic e evil. <coughs> Let, let me look for some other, if you have a, a, a terrible uh, environment and you can't breathe and you can't drink the water, that, that's, that's bad. That's economic evil. <laughs> Miseducation. If you can't function in society and be, uh, uh, enter society and work in society, that's evil. 
if you have a government out of control and, and you have a dictator and uh, the, the old Soviet Union, <coughs> that's bad. Um, health, if, 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 you, if you don't have a good healthcare system to uh, help you recover from when you have a disease, that's economically bad. Um, Global warming, if you take it to the extreme, although we all want to be warmer, uh, but you take it to the extreme and, and the North Pole and South Pole uh, melt, and, and we, we all have, we're swimming uh, in Manhattan because uh, we're all underwater, that's not so good. Um, if we don't control GMO, if we don't control um, genetic modifications of food, that could be evil. Um, Let's see, now let's go to some cultural issues. Cultural greed, how to control greed. Um, how to control population is, is more economic issue. Uh, social pressure, that, that's a dysfunctional culture. I'll put that number two. Um, let's see, uh, religion, um, terror, um, that, that's both issues two and three. In other words, a cultural and physical evil. Uh, racism is a cultural defect. By the way, anti-Semitism is racism. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna stop in uh, two minutes. And we have deception, which is cultural, and uh, appeasement, which is three. Okay, and war is three. Let me, I'm gonna end in two minutes. In two minutes, we're gonna discuss a, a simple little issue. Go out 100 years from today, pretend, you're talking about children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and pretend we're all here. 100 years from today to discuss it. Who will have won, good or evil? You've got two minutes. Who will have won? There's a battle between good and evil. There's been a battle since the, since the beginning of uh, human beings, since the beginning of the animals. Uh, a battle between good and evil. If you go out, pretend we're talking a hundred years from today and we're looking back, who will have won, good or evil? Yes? So every action is an equal and opposite reaction? <laughs> so you're saying there'll just be a tug of war, like a tug of war? Well, uh, uh, the, the usual back and forth between good and evil? Yeah. Okay. So whichever we choose to indulge, whichever we sort of emphasize, that's the it's hard to make a prediction because the prediction is going to depend on our behavior. Okay, that's what I'm, that, you're right. It depends on our behavior. How are we going to behave over the next hundred years? We, the world population, how are we going to behave over the next hundred years? It's, it's not easy. You can argue it any way you want. Yes? Um, I think we've made so much like, progress so far that uh, that's the only direction. Like, so good's going to win. Because you think you're watching a movie. There's no more. You think it's like Star Wars or something? Well, this is the most progress we've ever made. So, I mean, you know. Your, your, your point's well taken. Good should win. But good doesn't have to win. Uh, if, if we were just talking in 1941, and I. statistics, though. Statistically, good wins over evil. But it's often a photo finish. Okay, yes. Uh, two, two, two last comments. I think good will be winning, but the battle will still continue, you know, forever, pretty much. Okay, yes. <laughs> well, it's not like in the Bible. The Bible is nonstop good, one page, and the next page is evil, and then, uh, but in general, good won, but a lot of people got killed along the way. Yes. Okay, last comment, and then I'll add one comment myself. I just have one last question for you. Uh, in your suggestions, you say that uh, in your handouts, you say that we should be proud of our Judeo-Christian heritage. What is our Christian heritage? I, I'm, I'm speaking uh, uh, from the point of view of America, looking at America. I'm not, in that example, I'm not speaking, sometimes I speak uh, as a Jew, sometimes I speak as an American. So the, uh, the Founding Fathers, for example, uh, often wrote about religion and, and the, the base being Judaism and then they uh, added Christianity on top of Judaism. So we, uh, in God we trust uh, on our, our bills, which why, by the way is getting taken off of our bills, but it's still on our, our currency. Do you prioritize Jewish values or American national values? I do both simultaneously because uh, all of us are, are 
are, are, are Jews, and, and we emphasize Jewish values, but we're also Americans, and we have uh, American values. So it's, it's like, take Thanksgiving, okay? Yeah. Thanksgiving is not a Jewish holiday, but we should be very proud to celebrate Thanksgiving. Okay. So uh, uh, I, I try to reflect uh, both of those values in, in my thinking. I personally believe that uh, Jewish values and any national values are mutually exclusive. Well, if you were the president, would you outlaw Thanksgiving? Um, I don't know what guys do. I mean, whatever guys want to do, they can do. I mean, I, I'm trying. So you you wouldn't celebrate Thanksgiving for yourself, for yourself, for example. Uh, holidays are a personal choice. I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah. But I mean. Okay, but anyways, I, I was trying to reflect. Uh, 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 as an observer uh, of America, uh, sometimes they speak as someone who's Jewish, sometimes they speak as an observer uh, uh, of, of America or of Western civilization. Let me just conclude in one minute by saying it's not obvious who's going to win good versus evil. History will tell you that good's going to win, but there's a lot of forces of evil too. And if those forces of evil get their hands on nuclear weapons, they're going to use them. They're not putting them in some missile silo in um, North Dakota, and in particular Iran, uh, with their nukes. Uh, if they get nukes, Saudi Arabia's going to get nukes. Tur uh, Muslim Brotherhood, Turkey and Qatar will get nukes. And uh, you could well have a nuclear war in 10 years. You have millions of dead people. We're in World War III right now. We don't know it. We're fighting a, a, a war till the finish between good and evil. We don't know it. And uh, I, like you, hope and expect the forces of good to win. But history would say a lot of people are going to get killed as the forces of good reassert themselves over the forces of evil. Anyways, thank you for your time. It was great to see all of you.